This video provides a brief introduction to EVSM Mix for mixed model value stream mapping. The mixed model problem is that in value streams sometimes you have many products that go through different stations, they can have different operational times, and they share many of the resources. The problem is, how do we avoid needing human computers to resolve this complexity? What we need from the mixed model value stream map is first speed. We want to create a master VSM as opposed to lots of individual ones. We want comprehension. So we want to see how products are made, uh, even if they have different routings and even where they use shared resources. And then based on the map and the metrics, we want insight with analytics so we can select the best improvements. Let's look at a demonstration of the EVSM mix software to see how to create a mixed model map from scratch and then analyze it and see what we can do with the results. Let's start by declaring the production time for the plant. Now we'll open up the mix manager and the product matrix template. This template is used to identify the products in the value stream so we give them brief IDs and then names. Now we define what processes these products go through. And a process can be an inventory, an activity center, a transport center, a supplier, etc. Once we provide the names of these processes, we'll go back and on the second row, we'll identify what the type of the process is, for example, inventory, supplier, etc. And this will let EVSM then put the right icons on the map for us to work with. So drop downs are provided so we can select each of the process types. Once this is done, we will put X's in the product matrix to show which products go through what process. In our example, we're going to assume that P1 and P3 go through part of the processes, whereas P2 go through all the processes shown. Once we've completed this product matrix, we can identify the different routings in it. And here you can see there are two different routings. Next, let's import in the data from the product matrix. Here's the products and sets. And now the VSM icons from the matrix will be drawn on the bottom of the page and the routing sets on the right. We can then select them and move them into position to create the map. There's the first lane for some of our products. And here's that additional lane that uh, one of our products needs. Use sequence arrows to define the material flow. We can now declare the demands for the individual products by clicking on the tab here.
In a second, we're going to put in the operational parameters, so we're just going to make some space. Now let's establish the routing. We'll use the display gates command and close the gates for the green set to avoid it needing that second lane. Now we can use the show set color commands to verify the routings. Yellow and green color codes there. Now let's enter in the operational parameters. We'll assume stamping also has a downtime, let's say 10%, and perhaps also changeovers. So we'll say it's three changeovers that take 60 minutes each. Once we do our capacity analysis, all of these losses will be taken into account. Debur might be a manual process, so it takes 90 seconds, but perhaps we have three debur stations. The cycle time for assembly varies because one of the products needs an extra component. So here we will choose to put in individual cycle times for each product. For the product specific values, if we want to see them explicitly on the map, we can explode them by right clicking the tab button. So here we've exploded the demand values and we can try the same thing for cycle time. Once the data is ready, we can solve the map. This applies the lean equations and will create the capacity, lead time, cost calculations that we need. Typically, we would use charts to visualize those metrics. The cool thing about EVSM Mix is because the input data is product-based, we can get output to be product-based as well. So, for example, instead of just getting an overall utilization for one of the stations, we can see the overall utilization and the breakdown by the product that's using it. Now let's plot the utilization chart. If we zoom in a little bit on the chart, we can see that uh, each of the little yellow bars has a corresponding product ID number on it, one, two, and three. We can also see the time taken for changeovers. Now let's plot a cycle time tack time chart. Let's zoom in a little bit. Notice uh, that we can see the impact of the losses here. 
and also that the tag time for thread is quite high, that's because only product 2 passes through thread. Both of the capacity charts showed us that there's low utilization for the deeper and thread stations. Right now we have uh, three deeper stations, we could change those to two easily. And perhaps also use two operators to do a combination of the thread and deeper activities by combining the stations. We had a resource center connected to deeper and thread. You have to input the time for the resource per item going through each station. Because there'll be walking involved initially, we're going to make the efficiency 90% and have two people there. So we have to resolve the map and then the results will allow us to plot a resource balance chart that shows what the resource is working on compared to the resource available. Resources in general can be people. You could also model equipment the same way. Uh, the resource, the blue resource icon can be changed to show equipment, etc. We'll make ourselves some space and now take a look at the lead time chart. We'll connect the lead time chart to the routing that it represents. This method allows us to plot a lead time for each of the routings. Here, the cycle times are so low that most of the lead times correspond to the weights in the inventory. We can do something similar with time summary centers. So we'll connect them to the routing as before. And then use solve to calculate the numbers. LT, VA, and VA is the lead time, which is a sum of the VA and NVA components that you see on the time ladder. And there are the calculated uh, lead times, value added, and value added percent times. We have uh, beta tested uh, EVSM mix with a group of lean practitioners. And as a summary of the overall benefits of mix, we thought we'd just provide a quote from one of those practitioners. The critical piece of the quote are that mix captures variations in process flow, cycle time, and other critical process parameters and that this allows us to use real demand scenarios to see or quantify 
the impact on the entire value stream in terms of resource capacity, lead time, and line balance. As next steps, we suggest that you contact us to discuss applicability of EVSM mix to your value stream. You can ask us related questions via email or phone. And then you may want to compare EVSM mix with your current approach to mix model value stream mapping. You can browse additional information on the software at evsm.com mix.